Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very exciting discovery coming from the center of our own galaxy, very close to the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star. And this time, once again, we found another collection of stars that seems to beat the previous record. As you can probably tell from the title, it's the record of the fastest moving star in the galaxy. So let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. Since the original discovery that there is something weird going on in the galaxy, which happened I think in the 70s, 1974 if I remember correctly, and since the original discovery of the first star orbiting around the black hole back in 2002, we've actually found quite a lot of stars in the vicinity. And here we're actually zooming into the location where you're going to see all of these stars orbiting around the imaginary point that represents the supermassive black hole. So somewhere right here, somewhere at the center of our own galaxy, that's where you're going to find the very, very massive black hole, roughly around 4.3 million masses of the Sun. And that black hole is what we call Sagittarius A star. And this is the obvious reason we know it's there, because these stars are orbiting around a very strange object in the middle, and these stars are orbiting really, really, really fast. This was actually filmed over the period of about 16 years and we've improved our ability to detect these stars and also our ability to see in this region with all of the new telescopes that we have today. And so some of the most recent observations that were announced through the Astronomer's Telegram are, well, they're really, really fast. They're really unusual objects that are moving extremely fast as they approach closer and closer to the black hole. And though we've already discovered quite a lot of these stars, only some of them are exciting to us because only some allow us to study the universe and our own galaxy and understand things that happen near black holes. Now normally these stars are referred to as the S stars and the most famous as well as the most studied and also the first discovered such star was the S2 star. This is the star that allowed us to prove Einstein's ideas and theories because as it approached the black hole, it started to become even more redshifted in its light and we were able to observe this pretty easily. But since then, uh, a lot of scientists have been trying to find more of these stars and more unusual objects in this region. A few months ago, I've actually talked about one such discovery of another type of an object here, known as the G objects. G objects were once again discovered by accident as well, and they seem to be very unusual former stars that turn into these very strange cloud-like formations that seem to have some star properties, but, well, actually you can learn more about them in one of the previous videos. All you need to know now is that they're there and they're also very strange. But even these S stars, as they interact with the black hole, become very different from typical stars. The scientists behind this study and behind this discovery refer to these objects as squeezars, and this is a concept that was originally proposed back in 2003 when we discovered the first S2 star. And the idea behind these squeezars is that it's really, really squeezed stars, squeezed by the tidal interactions with the black hole. We can try to imagine all of this by using this simulation right here. So this is a very simple simulation with the black hole located right here, and a star orbiting with a very eccentric orbit around the black hole. At some point in its orbit, it's going to approach the black hole really, really close, and this is where it's going to experience very powerful tidal effects from the black hole. And because of this, as you can see, the star will actually sort of start falling apart, and the star will get squeezed and stretched by the tidal interaction with the black hole, because it's essentially really, really close to the event horizon now. But after this, once it moves away from the black hole, it's actually probably going to recombine and become a star once again. So these squeezers are really, really interesting objects. And although for most of these S stars, you can kind of more or less describe their orbits using Newtonian physics or Newtonian orbital dynamics, which is actually what this simulation here uses as well, when it comes to some of these stars, such as the previously mentioned S2 star, or the newly discovered S4711, 4712, and most importantly this one right here, 4714, these stars come close enough to the black hole to start experiencing Einsteinian effects, and so you can't really describe their orbits with just Newtonian physics. 
And because of these effects, they also start experiencing a lot of redshifts and a lot of orbital precession as well. Something that Einstein was able to explain when he talked about how Mercury gets these effects from our Sun as well. And because we've discovered so many different objects in orbit around this black hole, we can now actually estimate its mass, which is roughly around 4.31 million masses of the Sun, with a lot more accuracy because we see so many stars in orbit, and we can use both Newtonian and, of course, Einsteinian effects to very precisely calculate the mass of the entire system, and, of course, even every single star. And these new calculations suggest that from all of these new stars we've discovered, most of them seem to be about maybe two to three masses of the Sun, but some stars even go as high as six to seven masses of the Sun. So they're essentially typical G and possibly F type stars, at least in terms of their mass. But in terms of the behavior and of course structure, they're probably extremely different from anything we can imagine. But the most interesting star, and also the one that had a lot of records, was always the S2 star. This is actually the simulation that was created when, back in 2018, this was used to prove Einstein's theories once again. As you can see, this is the redshifting that this star experienced, and we observed this uh, with a lot of different telescopes. Then, a few months ago, I've talked about another star known as S62, and this became the new record holder for the fastest star in the galaxy, and of course the fastest star in this region. That star was moving at roughly around 20,000 kilometers per second, or about 6.7% of the speed of light. That's pretty fast. But it looks like the new star just beat that record by a little bit. It moves at about 24,000 kilometers per second, which is about 8% of the speed of light. In other words, we now have a new record holder for the fastest star in the vicinity. But the reason the star moves so fast is because of its extremely eccentric orbit. It's actually even more eccentric than what you see right here. Its orbit sort of looks like this. It's about 98.5% in eccentricity, meaning that it sort of moves really, really slowly right here. And then it speeds up right here, and as it moves closer and closer to the black hole, it speeds up to the point where it streaks across at around 24,000 kilometers per second. At this point, it actually starts experiencing dilation effects, with the time dilation being roughly around 2%. Which means that, I guess, if you were to stay here on Earth, and if you were to stay somewhere around that star, by staying here on Earth, the time would move about 2% faster. Obviously, this is not a huge difference, it's not like interstellar, but still pretty significant. And so that's the star, or, well, Squeezer, technically, known as S4714. But the other star that was discovered here, known as S4711, seems to be the record holder for the shortest period. The single year here, or the single orbit around the black hole, only takes the star about 7.6 years. So this means that we're going to be able to observe this star going around the black hole every 7.6 years, and because we know its orbit and its other parameters, it's going to be very easy for us to study other effects in this region now. But the other important question here is, are these squeezars different from typical stars, from, for example, other S stars in the region? And theoretically, they do seem to be different. One major difference here is that unlike S stars, squeezars seem to be so-called dead stars. In other words, it's the stars that are slowly decaying in orbit and are definitely going to fall into the black hole. The major explanation for their behavior here is that when they approach really, really close to the black hole, the tidal effects and the actual energy generated by these tidal effects, with every single passage, convert a small fraction of the star's orbital energy into heat. And they also take away a little bit of that orbital energy and move the star closer and closer to the black hole. So as these stars pass close to the black hole, move away from the black hole, pass close to the black hole and do it again, all of this sort of moves them closer and closer, and also makes them shine brighter and brighter. It also disrupts their shape, but they do seem to reform once in a while. This of course could explain how certain black holes become active, because this is maybe how some stars eventually fall into these black holes. Now we don't really know how long all of this takes just yet, and it will probably take years for us to try to investigate, for example, if these squeezers are truly there, and if they are truly falling into the black hole. But honestly, if they are slowly falling into the black hole, we might want to find out when this happens. 
Today, we know that our black hole is very inactive compared to others in the other galaxies, and if our Sagittarius A star starts to become active, we don't really know what effects it will have on planet Earth. It might actually have some detrimental effects. So studying these stars and trying to understand how they affect the center of the galaxy is actually sort of important. Not that we can do anything about it anyway. Even if the star starts to approach closer and closer and turns our galaxy into some sort of a quasar, we don't really have any means to stop this. So for now, it's really all about curiosity and trying to understand how all of this works. But unfortunately, that's kind of all we know. We know these stars are really fast, we also know that this is a new record holder, and we also seem to have proof of the existence of these so-called squeezars. But other than that, once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with a future video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now. And either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.